Welcome to our video tutorials on transport transforms for signal and image analysis and machine learning. This video is the first one in a series of videos, and here we'll describe, we'll give an overview of the techniques that will be discussed in subsequent videos. In this series of videos, we'll describe an emerging data transformation technique for building predictive and mathematical models that can be applied to traditional signal estimation problems, as well as more modern problems related to learning-based smart systems for diagnosis, reconstruction, and other applications. I'll call your attention to two websites, which I'll also add the link to in the description. One is the imagedatascience.com slash transport, where you'll find many of the papers uh, related to the techniques that we'll be describing. And the other one is our PyTrans kit GitHub repository, where you'll find many of the codes that implement these techniques. As engineers and mathematicians, most of us are familiar with um, signal and image transforms. One such transform is the Fourier transform, which is displayed here, where a one-dimensional signal, in this case a temporal signal, is transformed into what we call transform domain, Fourier transform domain, where the frequencies of this particular signal can be elucidated and made clear. One thing of note that we're all familiar with is that this transform is a two-way operation. One can go from the signal to transform domain, uh, without losing any, any information, and therefore we can go back from transform domain back to signal domain. Another such transform that many of us are familiar with is the so-called wavelet transform for 1D signals and 2D images, where an image, in this case a medical imaging phantom, can be transformed into wavelet domain, which is basically a description that combines a low-pass or low-resolution version of this image in combination with the edge information that is necessary to reconstruct the image. Again, this is a two-way street, two-way operation where we can take the image from its native domain into transform domain, can do some processing and invert back, back to image domain. The type of techniques that we'll be discussing in the series of videos have to do with so-called transport transforms or optimal transport transforms where an image, in this case, the, an image of the digit handwritten digit number five, is transformed into transport transform domain, which has to do with matching this image or deforming or warping or morphing this image onto a template. And the transformation that deforms this image into this template is what we call this transform. And once again, like the previous two transforms we talked about, namely the Fourier and the wavelet transform, this is a two-way operation where we can go from the image to transform domain and again from transform domain back to image domain. So as a reminder to us all, let's first talk about why do this, right? Let's remind ourselves why it is useful to have these kind of transforms. Uh, and the answer is basically to make problems easier to solve. As, as we remind ourselves of the Fourier transform definitions, which take your signal from signal from time domain into frequency domain in this case in this example and uh, we have the inverse formula which takes your signal from transform domain back to signal domain right uh, one good application of this technique is to solve so-called convolution problems which can be hard to solve although they're linear problems they can be hard to solve in signal domain and if we express the same problem in Fourier domain Right? We can solve, for example, if we know what the, in the imaging world, this is called the point spread function, this H is called the point spread function, and we have the measured data, the measured output, so we know these two quantities, and we would like to know what would be, would this, what is the signal that would have generated the measured data. We can solve for it by first transforming the entire problem into Fourier domain, and then solving for the Fourier transform of our answer by simple division, again, assuming that the Fourier transform of the point spread function is not zero. And once you obtain the expression for the transform of our signal or the quantity of interest, we can then apply the inverse formula to this uh, equation that we obtained to obtain the answer back in signal domain. So the, the summary of the, the appeal of these kind of transforms is to make certain problems easier to solve. Likewise, the type of transform that we'll be describing in the subsequent videos has analytical formulas. Here is an example of such a transform. We'll discuss this uh, later on. And the whole idea is to take signals 
which uh, may be, for example, hard to classify or harder to classify if they're expressed in the original signal domain. If we take the, uh, these signals databases to transform domain, they can be easier to classify. Perhaps the, the, the signal classes can become convex and thus perhaps a, a simple method like a linear classifier can work well. A brief outline of the topics that we'll be covering in the series of videos includes the definition of these so-called transport transforms for signals for images, we'll talk about their mathematical properties, and we'll describe the connections to optimal transport. Uh, along the way, we'll talk about our PyTranskit software package, which will implement these uh, transforms for digital signals and images, and we'll show many examples with this software package. And along the way, we'll also talk about many applications in nonlinear signal estimation problems, model-based inverse problems, something we call transport-based morphometry, as well as more generic machine learning like image classification. As I mentioned, we have a software package, an open source software package that allows us to do the computations relating to computing the actual transforms for 1D signals to the images and other types of data. We also have command line tools for uh, that do specialized statistical analysis on these kind of transforms. And we also have what we call the transport-based morphometry toolboxes that helps discover morphometry information in signals and images in a way that is especially related to transport and optimal transport. As I mentioned, there are numerous applications for this type of techniques. Uh, one of the applications is what we have referred to as transport-based morphometry, or TBM, where the goal is, given a database with labeled data, different classes, the goal is to produce a model of the discriminant information between these classes. Right? We may want to discover the differences between, in morphology between male and female uh, faces, or uh, 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 serious faces and smiling faces. In the cell imaging world, we may want to discover the differences between uh, cells coming from a benign tumor versus a malignant tumor, uh, uh, normal brains versus diseased brains, um, normal ECG or EKG signals versus abnormal EKG signals. Here is the graphical description of this technique. For example, here we're looking at the cell a morphometry problem where we would like to discover the morphology differences between malign cells and malignant cells. We can simply take the entire data set and for each image we can compute its transport transforms and this is this is going to be equivalent to one of these dots in transport domain where we can then fit our favorite classifying classifier technique. For example here we have fit a line, a linear classifier with Fisher discriminant analysis and given this this is a a mathematical transform that has both a forward formula as well as an inverse form formula, which you can use to apply to images, we can then actually talk about inverting the actual classifier function. So that, and this is the inverse of this classifier function so that we can visualize and understand and learn something about the differences between benign cells or cells from a benign tumor versus the cells from a malignant tumor. and other applications related to parametric nonlinear signal estimation problems. Here we have a brief description of the old um, radar signal processing problem where the objective is to measure both the time delay and the frequency shift of a, a radar wave that was sent perhaps to a moving obstacle, a moving target like a car, so we can measure the speed and the distance from this car. Right. Um, so the problem of estimating the uh, frequency shift and the time delay of, of this uh, radar wave is a well-known problem for which there are numerous signal processing techniques. But this is a nonlinear problem in that if you set up an optimization function, an object objective function, um, you will see that this cost function has numerous local optimum. If we express the problem in transform domain, in transport transform domain, 
we now have we have ways to linearize this problem in the sense that we have a quadratic, at least squares, quadratic problem which can be solved algebraically. If we use the same kind of techniques uh, for measuring these time delay for wave propagations, uh, uh, we can also solve source localization problems, inverse problems, where if these problems are solved again in uh, transport transform domain, you have a much more accurate uh, localization of the source, which in this case is the crack on a material or a plate that wants, one wants to localize. We can also apply this type of technique to signal and image reconstruction problems, model-based signal and image reconstruction problems, where the models are learned from existing images or signals that one may have at his or her disposal. In this case, we'll be learning transport uh, type models from existing data, which are kind of, one can kind of think of this as a, a template that undergoes some typical deformations or some typical transportations, let's say. And we can, in transport domain, we can actually model these using standard linear techniques. But when we apply these transport maps, we apply this to a given template, in this case that I'm showing here, the image of a face. And the, by solving this kind of these squares problems, we can actually upsample images. In this case, we have upsampled an image from five by six pixels, or in total 30 pixels, so low resolution data, back to something like 200 by 200 pixels, which turns out to be uh, quite close to the actually uh, original image, which was left out of the training database in this case. I also already mentioned that this kind of transformation technique can be applied to machine learning problems like supervised learning or classification. And we have recently devised systems which are like convolutional neural networks. They're also end-to-end -end in the sense that there are no feature extraction methods, no superfluous uh, pre-processing, etc., that needs to be performed on a database before you can classify held out images or signals. And we have applied this to a number of problems, include, including Chinese printed characters, MNIST uh, characters, finalist databases, uh, optical communication databases, sign language, hand signals databases, uh, brain MRI databases, where this type of technique uh, can be advantageous. They can get high classification accuracies when a lot of training data available, but especially high classification accuracies also when a low amount of training data available. They are orders of magnitude uh, cheaper to compute as well, and they also have very good out-of-distribution testing performance characteristics. And last but not least, I would like to express my thanks to the many students, current and past, that have worked on the papers and the ideas and the softwares and the applications uh, together with me, as well as current and past collaborators.